All right, so I am sewing a new ultralight backpacking hammock today. And um, if you've seen my recent vi video about learning disabilities, you'll maybe appreciate this uh, to a greater extent. But I find myself, like often before, approaching a new hobby with a lot of intimidation and confusion. And I find that the general explanations offered by people are just too vague and um, too inaccurate for my taste and for my style. And so I just wanna walk you through what I've learned. And if you're cut from the same cloth that I am, then maybe you'll appreciate this kind of thing. So I bought this fabric from a website called Rip Stop by the Roll. It's a one ounce, um, it's called Hyper D one ounce nylon. One ounce basically describes how much it weighs for a certain dimension. I think it's uh, one yard. And so that basically describes the density and the thickness. And um, what you find is uh, along with the fabric, you need a thread and then you need a needle and then you need the right tension. And you need all of these things to be right in order for the project to turn out well. And when you Google how to um, you know, match thread to fabric and all these kinds of things, what you often run into is that you're getting advice from someone in a particular context. And it's very unlikely that the person in that context is working with super lightweight materials that are not quite space, space age, but they're far from cotton and denim. And so what happens is when you ask someone, like I just did my mother, a somewhat simple question, you get a very unhelpful answer because um, she's in a particular context. She's made dresses and jeans and things like that, and she's almost never worked with something so lightweight. So that's one of the problems with advice and counsel is that it often comes out of the wrong context. Anyhow, when you buy this material, they recommend that you use a particular thread, which in this case is Guterman Mara 70. And the thread spool describes to you what kind of needle to use. And uh, Rip Step by the Roll also recommends a particular needle to use. Now, if you're a little bit too philosophically minded like I am, you then ask yourself the question, okay, well, what happens if I use the wrong needle? Um, what would it mean to use the wrong needle? Too thick, too thin? What are the different ways that I can get this wrong? What are the different failure modes of the needle size, right? And what you quickly find out is there's lots of needles. There's special needles for leather. There's what are called ballpoint needles for Jersey, where it's basically not pointy at the top, at the tip, it's basically a ballpoint so that it spreads the fibers and goes in between them versus cutting them, and then you have universal needles. And so there's a lot to choose from. There's all these different sizes, 70, 10, 80, 12, 90, 14. Um, basically that's a European sizing and American sizing. So there's just all these things that immediately confront you. And then the machine starts jamming and you start getting pissed off. And, and you just sometimes maybe ask like I do, like why can't this be a little bit easier? Okay, so a couple things that I've learned. The first thing is that you basically want the smallest needle possible because you want to perforate your fabric as little as possible. You don't want to create a bunch of holes for it to tear. Now, having too big of a needle will work, but it will leave big holes in your material. And so what you want to do is you want to find the smallest needle that you can. And how small is too small? Well, here's the test. You take the thread that you're going to use and you take the needle that you hope to use and you put it like that. And then you begin to tilt your hands and you see if the needle can slide. And if the needle, you gotta do it both ways because of the way that the eye is made in the needle. And they say that if the needle will slide when your thread is approximately at a 60 degree, then you're good. And so that's, let's say, a universal test that you can use to find out if you have the appropriate type of needle. Now, tension is the next thing. So sewing machines have this tension wheel and you can have too much or too little. So with the mind that God gave me, I had to know what it looked like to have too little and too much. So I made 10 rows of stitching. Over here is zero tension. Over here is nine tension. I'm gonna tilt the screen. I'm gonna tilt the camera now to show you. And so again, because my mind works the way that it does, it's not just enough for me when someone says, oh, you have to have the right tension. Well, is there a range of correct tensions? Is there only one number on the wheel which is correct? What about all the little clicks in between the wheel? You basically have a hundred positions on this wheel. You know, how many of them are correct? Do I have to dial it into position number 45 or will position 35 through 55 work for me? Now, what's interesting is all of these tensions actually worked. Nothing bunched up and turned into a bird's nest. Um, 
it actually all held up fairly well. And so um, I called my mom and she was explaining what you really wanna do is you wanna use the least amount of tension possible so that it doesn't bunch and you don't want to be able to see the thread from the other side. So if you're unfamiliar with a sewing machine really quick, you have the thread coming in from the top and then you have the thread coming in from the bottom. And if you were to make this one black and this one green, that would be ideal for setting tension because what you'll find is that a particular tension, you can begin to see the thread coming up from the other side. So let me see if I can point that out to you. I guess I could have taken my own advice and done it in black, but I didn't. So what you see here is the thread from the top, but then in between here and here, you can actually see all of these little, what look like horizontal pieces right there. And that's actually the thread from this side, which has been pulled through the fabric to ex be exposed on that side. And that's an indication of poor tension. Now, in this case, this is at a zero. Now on this side, it actually looks good. If you look in between the stitches here, you can see gaps and you basically can't, you basically, like here, you can't see the, f the thread from the other side. Now, if you go to the other end of the spectrum and you go to nine, it's easy to see in between the thread stitches is the, the thread which has been pulled from the other side. Now, it's important to check both sides because one side is gonna look better than the other. But this is what I would call an engineer's approach to thread tension is, okay, I have 10 options. I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna use the lowest option and the highest option, everything in between, and then I'm gonna evaluate. And the key indicator of proper thread tension would be that you don't see these uh, pull throughs on either side of the material. You just have these nice loops like this uh, without anything in between. So, all right, if you're a little bit weird like me, maybe that was helpful for you. If you're a real seamstress, you probably saw things in this video that I said that were, uh, the vernacular was incorrect or the vocab was incorrect, so you don't have to correct me on that. But um, I just know how difficult it was for me to learn things in school. And I know how difficult of a time I had in school. And as I get older and wiser, I see that I approach things with a different mindset and from a different angle than a lot of other people do. And that's why before starting a project, I have 10 rows of thread with 10 tension levels because I just have to know that kind of thing before I do this and am satisfied with the project in the end. So I hope that was helpful to maybe someone who's learning to make their own gear or sewing, or if you're the kind of person who just finds himself always approaching things from a different angle than your peers, then don't feel bad. You'll probably be an engineer someday or do something that other people can't do because you have a higher attention to detail or you have a higher desire for precision and accuracy than the common man. All right, folks, take care.